without the canoe builder, there would not be a canoe. Without the navigator, there would not be a road to go. Without the captain of a ship, there would not be order. And without the crew, there would be no place to go. All these things are not said. All these things are not heard. How hard it was, how many places we went asking for help. How many times they would say no? Our own canoes, the Hokulea, the Hawaii Loa, they should have been in the back of us too. Because they also had the expertise of mouth. They could not sail the Hokulea or the Hawaii Loa they are not here with us. They said they were too busy preparing to go to another journey. <laughs> but in my heart, I felt, what is other journey when Maui is going to go? I think all the three canoes should have been on their water coming with him. But in a way, we're glad that only <laughs> But I know that there, there will be envy because we did get here and they will be envious of us. But still, we must stay together as a canoe family no matter what what they say, yes or no, whatever. As a canoe people, we should take together. Yes, voices in the wind, voices that say, I put you on that island centuries ago, generations ago. It was I that put you on that island. And it's not there for you to keep that island that I put you on is for you to take care. It's for you to take care for, the, for my descendants. Voices in the wind that we do not hear. Words that are, are said but you cannot hear. If only you would listen. Two canoes came. One was modern and one was of our ancestors. But they came side by side. Together they came. Why can't we go to life like that? The modern and the ancient together into the future. Not lose our elders' way of doing things. Without the elders, we are not here. Without our ancestors, we are not here. Because you did not fall from a tree. You did not just happen. It took the ancestors who discovered islands that we are here today. In that, we should be very thankful, especially for the navigator. Because the navigator was really the one that produced. Yeah. <laughs> uh, working uh, to protect, perpetuate, and preserve our culture. And we try to do it through education. In 1990, we were approached, we meaning a bunch of us that sail for Korea for a number of years, we were approached uh, to do a project on the Big Island. That project later came out to be Hawaii law, the void you can have Hawaii law. Uh, <clears throat> we were asked to look for two pollocks in our forest, native forest, that was big enough to build a void you can For about a year, we went to all, all the coal forests looking for these logs, and they were logs. Uh, we hear some contradiction about that, but they were logs in this forest. 
but because our, our forest is logged up, uh, the amount of, of co-forested citizen was still intact, was in very, very much acreage. For us to go into that forest and pull those logs out, those logs out would mean destroying all the forest. So the decision was made not to get the logs to Hawaii. Okay? Uh, two logs were the, that eventually became Hawaii law were donated from the uh, native, Alaska, native Americans of Alaska. Uh, they were called Sea Alaska or the Blinket and the Hyde tribes. <coughs> but even though we couldn't get, we couldn't build those uh, Hawaii law with the native logs, there was another project that was a spin off of that uh, course church and that became known as Mau Law, Mau Law Project. Okay. Mau Law is a single hull uh, intercoastal canoe that was made traditionally. We started that project uh, late 1991 and we finished in 1993. And when I say traditionally, look at those pictures. It was done uh, with the ceremonies and protocol of our hukuna. Of Fellow tree with axe, stone axe that, that uh, stone came from Kyanakukoi, up in Mount Kya. Uh, with the help of Akupuna, Uncle Robert Kekialani, Uncle Sonny Solomon, Uncle Clarence Moderis, this project took off. After the launching of, of, of Maulua, we then uh, started or thought about building an avoiding for the site. And that's where Makali. That's what Makali was built right here right now. In 1995, <clears throat> February 1995, Makali took his made voyage to Tahiti, up to the Pumotus, to the Bacchus, and back to Hawaii. That voyage, we were joined with three canoes from the South Pacific, one from uh, New Zealand, Aotearoa, called Te Aurele, and two from the Cook Islands. One to Tonga and the other one to All six canoes came back to Hawaii together. Um, in 1999, we just, we just finished the Imao voyage, which is dedicated in honoring Master uh, Navigator Mao Piero, who unselfishly gave up his time for 24 years to help us return the art of Mishnah navigation. Uh, it was an honor for us to take him to the I actually promised him over 20 years ago to do it. Yeah. So um, we left February 10th of this year and we got back. What was it? We got back here in June 4th this year. So, you know, we just got, we just got back. We had a total of 52 crew members. Um, our oldest crew member, 69 years old, he just walked in. Huh? <laughs> 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 and our youngest is 18. About one third of our crew members were students that came from our educational programs within the last four years. We have crew members from all different parts of the island. And Members from Lazo and Marshall Islands, Ponope and the Federal States of Micronesia, crew members from Sarawak, where Mao's from, also crew members from Guam, and crew members from Saika. So it's, 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 it's a big family, it's not a little uh, small family. Uh, this time I'd like to turn that one to Chad. By Sean, Chad has been saving for a number of years. But Chad was the captain of this this voyage, the Imam voyage, uh, from when started until now. <laughs>